Lolo. This ain't for anybody. I don't expect anybody here to be into it. I'm just talking from a nigga shoes who've been through it. Life's too short, I'm just getting into it. They say get it where you fit in. Little nigga, well, I'm sorry that I don't fit. This a light at the end of the tunnel. Welcome back to Lost and Yonkers. I am your host, DJ from Yonkers, and y'all already know part two. Let's get right into it. So boom. Me and my son, like I said, got kicked out of Chelsea Projects by that lady. She wasn't trying to hear nothing. And uh, me, and, me and my son, late night, it's probably one in the morning, um, and we walking up to the train station. We don't really know where we going. And um, we end up on 96th Street and 1st Avenue on, on like East Harlem. Um, Chelsea Project, I mean, sorry, not Chelsea Project, Isaac Projects. Um, we had some relatives there. So we end up crashing on the couch that night. I didn't sleep at all that night. Um, you know, thinking like, man, you know, this is really like rock bottom. Um, but like I said, little did I know, it was just the beginning of my rock bottom. So uh, after that day, my son goes back to Yonkers to my mother's house. I wasn't, I wasn't, Go, I wasn't rocking with Yonkers because, like I said in part one, I did mad dirt and everybody know everybody. So, of course, niggas is looking for me and all that. So, I wasn't rocking with Yonkers. I was staying in Harlem. So, my son goes back to Yonkers and about a week, maybe two weeks go by. I'm crashing at the at Isaac Projects whenever I can. And... um. Um, now it's August 3rd, 2014. Late night. It's probably 10, 11 o'clock. My mother calls me. Now, remember at this time, me and my mother have fallen out a couple months back because of my stupid ass addiction and what I did to her husband when I got him for the $100. So we weren't talking for a minute. And... It was crazy because it was the first time, like, as an adult that me and my mother ever fell out. And it, w it was ugly. You know what I'm saying? We said a lot of ugly shit back and forth. And so it was all bad. She calls me August 3rd, 2014. So I answer. She's on vacation in DR. She's chilling. She's drinking a beer. And we start talking. And she's like, you know, I apologize to her. She apologized to me. She said she loved me. I told her I love her. And she was like, you know, when, when I get back in a few weeks, we're going to sit down. We're going to work it out. You know, you're my son. I love you. You need to get better, you know, because she knew I was I was fucked up. So I'm like, yeah, that sounds good or whatever. So she had called that night because my son, my same son, the first, my first son, his birthday is August 4th. So she called August 3rd because she thought I was, she, she thought he was with me. But he wasn't. He was in Yonkers. So she wanted to talk to him that night and say happy birthday because she figured we'll be running around on his bir on his actual birthday. So she wanted to make sure she caught us so she could say happy birthday. But he wasn't with me. So um, she in good spirits and all that. She like, all right, I'm going to try again tomorrow. She hangs up. So tomorrow, on my son's birthday, August 4th, 2014, the phone call never comes. She never calls. I'm not thinking too much of it until afternoon time. I'm in Harlem. I'm on 106th Street and uh, sitting in this park on a bench. And my phone rings and it's my mother's husband. He didn't go on vacation with her. He stayed here in New York. So he calls me and he's like hysterical. So I'm like, yo, what up? Calm down. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I can't understand what he's saying. So... When he finally slowed down, he says, your mother's dead. So I'm like, what? Yo, that right there, that phone call right there was the worst phone call that I ever received ever in life to this day. So he like, yo, your mother's dead. So I'm like, what you mean my mother's dead? You know, I can't really put nothing together. I'm bugging. So he like, yo, I'm like, what happened? He like, I don't know. I'm like, yo, I just spoke to her last night. So he's here, so he's not knowing what happened either. Um, so we bugging. You know how they say your knees get weak and shit, your knees buckle? 
that shit is true because when all this is happening, everything, my whole world went like in slow motion. I stood up and my knees, my legs was done. So I fell to the ground. I literally fell to the ground. Like people had to help me up and shit. So I got a story about that. I'll probably get into that more, but that's not what we're talking about right now. But that's very important because after that day, when I lost my mom, that's that was the beginning, the very beginning of my rock bottom. You feel me? So my mother passes away. Life is in shambles. I don't even want to, at this point, I don't want to live at all. I want to die. And of course, my addiction is loving it because, you know, addiction feeds off of that negative shit. You feel me? So of course you lose your mom, your addiction is happy now because your uh, your addiction is like, oh, we lit. We about to take way more drugs now. And that's exactly what I did. I started popping off way more pills. And um, so my mom, she had left, she had left $115,000. 50 for me, 50,000 for my sister, and 15,000 for her funeral expenses and shit. So I got 50 racks and I was the um I was the the I forget what you call that, but I was the one that was that picked up the money and all that and and had to set everything up. On her will, she left me as the as the um I forget, man. Just leave it in the comments what that's called. So me, my addiction, I take the 50, I got the 15 for her funeral expenses, and I fuck up the 15 too. Not all of it, but I do fuck up the fi- some of the 15, you know, stupid addict shit, bro. Unbelievable shit. So, um, matter of fact, I'll let you, I'll, right now, I'll tell you a piece of what I did. Listen, my mother is my life. I lost her. But my addiction is so strong at this time. And, you know, like I'm so gone that my mother always says she wanted to be cremated. So we cremate her. I'm supposed to go pick up her ashes. Bro, I never went to go get them ashes. My sister had to come from wherever she was living at to come with her money. Because I got the money that, that I'm supposed to pick the ashes up with. But I'm too busy up in hotel rooms stressing you know, doing some straight addict shit and just trying to trying to kill myself. You know what I'm saying? So time goes by. I take the I get the fifty racks. I get an apartment. I get a little car. Me and my son move into the apartment and whatever that costs, that's what I spent and everything else went on pills. And another shit that I fucking started messing with was Molly. I met this dude from Harlem that had this, had some molly. I took it one day and my addictive personality, I fell in love with that shit too. So the whole 20, for one whole year, from like August 2014 to August 2015, I was popping molly. Wait, I wake up, pop five or six perks. Cause now at this time, I'm just, I'm just trying to see if I could kill myself basically, right? So. Five or six perks in the morning. Molly in the afternoon. I'm high as hell. Nighttime. Five or six or seven perks. One shot. Sometimes, no lie, sometimes I would take 10, 11, 12 in one shot. So, you know, if, if, if you know, you know. You know, I was bugging. So, I'm doing this for about a good year. So much so that this year is so foggy. Like, I, I remember very little of this whole year that just went by. So, I end up blowing through the 50 like this. Um, we lose the apartment. I end up in Mount Vernon. The only thing, everything is, everything is crazy. The only thing I never stopped was the drugs. You feel me? So, we end up in Mount Vernon take my son with me we end up renting a room in Mount Vernon I found this little job and the you know because of the drugs because of the addiction even at the job I'm going crazy I'm stealing from the job I'm stealing money from the job I get locked up in Mount Vernon for um 
stealing two guns from this dude. I got a story about that. You know, if you go back, you'll see the story about the two guns. All this was happening because of my addiction and because of my downfall. You feel me? But I still wasn't at rock bottom, and I had to I had to reach the bottom in order to start rising back up to the top. So uh, I'm, you know, very close to rock bottom, Mount Vernon. We end up losing the room. I end up losing the job. I end up getting arrested. I came back out. Um, so Mount Vernon is a wrap. Now I'm homeless because I don't got the I don't got the room. I don't got nowhere to go. I burned my bridges. Now I'm in Harlem and I'm homeless. Right? My son, I end up sending him to go stay with his mom's, which wasn't a good um, a good a good idea. But at the time, it was like the best of the two evils. You feel me? If you know, I might get into that in a later episode. So now I'm in Harlem. I'm homeless. I got nowhere to stay. I'm crashing wherever I could crash. And I get to the point where I find myself with nowhere to stay, straight homeless, no money, you know, eating whatever I could eat and crashing on the trains if I could. Like, you feel me? That shit was crazy. So a little more time go by, I can't take it no more. I see some lady and she tells me, you should go to the shelter. You should go to the men's shelter. Of course, when she says shelter, I'm like, shelter like me? Because, you know, I, I still, even though I'm almost rock bottom, I've been on drugs, on pills, on perks for years at this point, I'm still thinking, I still view myself as DJ, you feel me? But not knowing, like, you ain't nowhere near DJ, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, um, when she says shelter, I'm like, hell no. I'm not going to no shelter. But reality, I ain't have no other choice, really. Like, that was that was it. It was either shelter or sleep on the subway. You know what I'm saying? So, that night, I end up signing up. The lady told me where to go. I end up going. And I end up going. They sent me to... If y'all know from New York, uh, Bedford and Atlantic, it's a men's homeless shelter. But that shit is the worst of the worst, bro. Like, crackheads, dope fiends. You know what I mean? You could imagine, bro. I end up, I end up there, right? So, I'm sitting in this room where they put everybody, and you got to wait for them to call your name to give you a bed. Once they give you a bed, they send you upstairs to where the beds is at. And you got your little bed for the night. Straight shelter shit. You know what I mean? The shit you see in the movies. So as I'm sitting there and I'm thinking um, and I'm waiting for my name to be called and I'm looking around and I'm just analyzing everything, that moment right there was rock bottom, right? That was my rock bottom right there. Me sitting in Bedford Atlantic, men's homeless shelter by myself, Surrounded by other homeless drug addicts, right? It was over. That was my rock bottom right there. I, I couldn't have gone. I mean, no, the next step was death. You know what I'm saying? So it, right, right then and there was my rock bottom. That was the lowest of the low for me. So I finally, they called my name. They sent me upstairs. I ended up crying that whole night. I'm cry, I cry my, I didn't sleep at all. I'm in, you know what I mean? I'm in a crazy strange ass place surrounded by a bunch of and they and then they up there smoking crack right there in in the shelter like so i fucking cry all night you know asking god like damn you know like get me help me you know i'm just asking anybody like help me any higher power please like i need i need this help i need to fucking i need to get out of this you know what i'm saying it's been like six seven years of pure hell you know it's time it's time for me to stand up so, sure enough, they end up, I end up staying there, but I slowly feel myself getting stronger. I'm still popping pills, I'm still getting high, but I feel different, you know what I'm saying? I feel different because I've realized that I'm at rock bottom, you know, and there's no other way but up at this point. So, slowly, I start to feel better about myself. I start to make goals and shit, which I haven't been doing for years. 
And I just started to like reevaluate my life and shit like that, right? So uh, I stayed there for a few weeks. They moved me to another shelter, which was my permanent shelter. Um, end up being like a working shelter. So you had to get a job quick or they'll kick you out, which um, was good for me because it was a clean spot, much cleaner than that shit. And since they make you get a job, you know, I had to go out and get a job. So that's what I did. I ended up getting a little gig, um, left that shit, got another gig. But at least I'm moving towards, you know what I'm saying, my recovery and getting back to myself. So slowly but surely, I start getting money, saving money, and weaning off these pills. So I, I basically did it on my own. I started getting, you know, going lower on the pills, lower, 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 until... I was damn near off them shits for myself. It took months, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna front. It took time. It wasn't easy. Sometimes, because when you were addict, you were addict, bro. So sometimes when I had some money, you know, I would just say fuck everything and just overdo it and get super high again. So it did. It was a struggle. You know what I mean? It was a struggle, but I stood strong and eventually I shook it off. You know what I'm saying? It's still at the shelter because I stayed at that shelter for about a good year, probably a year and some change. So now we like 2016 and I got a good job now, which believe it or not, I'm still working at the job now because it's like six years later right now today. I still got that same job, nice job. I got completely clean, um, got a crib, bank account, saved money. You know what I mean? I, I found out my son was about to be born. I found out I was, I was gonna have a son 2016 and that right there was like what sealed the deal for me and I was like yeah I'm gonna do it for myself but I'm gonna also do it for my kids you feel me and to this day I ain't looked back yet you know what I'm saying I'm clean as hell for since then and um yeah man that's how I did it that's how I did it that was my story and like I said I'm clean right now you already know, like, once you're an addict, you're always an addict. Even though you're clean, you're always going to be an addict. So, you know, you can't never feel too confident about yourself. So, you know, even even today, I still watch what I do and watch who I come or go around and shit like that. But that's my story, you know. And that's how I made it. That was my Percocet addiction and how I ended up beating it. You heard? So, I hope y'all like the story. Leave comments whatever tell me what y'all want to hear next or whatever and until next time matter of fact before that anybody that is on drugs trying to get off you know what i mean or alcohol whatever and you know you need you need a shoulder to lean on or whatever you need you know whatever just reach out leave it in the comments reach out whatever i can help y'all with i'm here you heard so until next time i love y'all one